happy Friday. This is Karen Bruno, and I'm a distributor for Young Living Essential Oils. I am so overjoyed because I just want to first of all, before I even start anything with this video, thank you guys so much for liking my page, Oils Well That Ends Well 6. You guys, I gave you the challenge of hopefully reaching 100 likes by Friday, and you guys have blown me out of the water. This page now has over 200 likes, which means that's 200 and 200 plus people that are making chemical free options for their family. It's very exciting and I'm glad that you've come to join me today because it is the long awaited recycled wool dryer ball special. All right, everybody, let's take a look at the materials that you'll need for this and hopefully this will be another chemical free option if you decide to use it for you and your you and your family in your laundry room. So the ingredients or supplies that you're gonna need for this are very, very easy. Um, we're first gonna start off with a 100% wool sweater. Okay, you can take a look right here. This is a uh, wool rich wool sweater. I found it at the local Salvation Army. Feel free to go to your consignment shops. Um, the only thing that I do strongly recommend is that it be 100% wool. Don't settle for 80% wool. Don't settle for 90% wool. Please try to find 100% wool um, sweater because that's going to yield the best benefits uh, for drying purposes in the dryer. Okay? And you can take a look at the tag. The tag will indicate whether or not it's 100% wool or not. And here in my tag, you can see it says men's extra large and right there it's a hundred percent wool okay so what you're gonna do is take your wool hundred percent sweater that's our first supply that we're going to need and I'm just gonna lay it down here for you guys so that you can see and then you're gonna need some thread this is just basic black thread so that you can see the contrast um, when I sew it so that you can tell how I do what's called a whip stitch you're gonna need a needle and then you're going to need a pair of scissors. I use my fabric scissors. And then you may select whatever um, Young Living oil that you would like your laundry to smell like. I like to use tea tree because of its antiseptic type properties. Um, and it smells great when it comes out of the dryer. All right, who's ready to get started, guys? First step that we're going to do right now is take your sweater and you're going to lie it on the ground or the table. You want to make sure that you have a big workspace, okay? This, the size of this sweater is an extra large, so I'm going to need a pretty big space. So I'm just doing it on the floor here in my living room. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that your sweater is facing up. So my sweater here has an opening down the front. You can see that um, I have that opening facing me. That's going to be important because if you need directions, the way that I have the directions written for this is um, the way that you see it here. Okay. First step you want to do is you want to take your scissors and you'll notice that I have some uh, buttons on the sweater. You want to cut them off. Buttons are made of plastic and plastic will not improve the drying performance of your dryer. So we're simply just gonna clip them off. And I like to save these buttons. You never know when you're gonna need them for another craft project around the house. Okay, and I'm just gonna set them off to the side. The next part that you wanna do is you wanna clip off the tag here. Okay. To the best of your abilities, it's okay if there's a little remnants left, but the majority of it you can just clip off, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to dissect our sweater. So put on your scientist hat. What we're going to do is we're going to start off by doing three cuts. My first cut is going to be on the seam of where my sleeves attach to the main body part of the sweater. So I just take my scissors and you can see I'm just cutting right along that sleeve that uh, seam right there. So here's part one. I'm gonna cut my other seam to my other arm. There's part two. And then what we're gonna do is where your sweater opens, you're just gonna kind of put it back a little and you're just gonna cut up the center of your sweater. And guys, when you're cutting this, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to eventually roll up all of these exposed seams, for the most part, into a ball, okay? So now you can see, after those three cuts, I now have four sections, okay? Out of these four sections, 
What I'm now gonna do is take my main body part here, I'm gonna open them up, and you're gonna wanna cut on that seam. And if you follow these directions, please note that the amount of dryer balls that you are going to get depends on the size of your sweater. Since this is an extra large sweater, I would say we can probably get six to eight dryer balls. Okay? After I cut that side seam of my sweater, we're going to cut where your shoulder is so that we have two additional pieces. And we're going to repeat that process for the other side. And this is a great project for you to get the kids involved in. Um, if they're looking to help mommy or daddy out, simply just have them come right along, have them take their scissors, and they can feel like they've helped you um, in your process of becoming chemical free. Okay. So now that I take a look at all my pieces, you'll notice I have two here, two here, that's four, and then I have five, six. Some of these pieces might be a little bit bigger, so you can choose to cut them in half if you wish. Okay? Let me show you how to make two of the dryer balls. We're first going to start with the sleeves. I'm going to set these off to the side. And you'll notice that you have a wider section of your sleeve and you have a narrower section of your sleeve. What you're going to do is you're going to start with the narrow section of your sleeve facing you. What you're going to do now is you're going to fold it like two triangles, bringing them in right here. So let's take a look at that again. You're going to take your two edges of where your cuff would be, and you're just going to kind of make two triangles. See, there's a triangle, and here's a triangle. You're going to fold them in, and then what you're going to do is you're going to start rolling it. Now, keep in mind, you're making a wool dryer ball. It does not have to be perfectly spherical, okay? Try to get it in a round shape and you'll be good as gold, okay? So as you're doing this, watch how I do that. I keep my one hand here. You're gonna pull it towards you because you, the key to these dryer balls is that you want them as tight as possible. So you can see I'm rolling for a little and then I might tuck in this other side here and I'm constantly just yanking back towards me because I want this ball to be as tight as possible. And you can see sometimes I just take in the sides here too as I'm rolling along, or you can choose to rotate it almost like if you were folding a flag. Just find a method that works for you. Now, what we're gonna do is I paused halfway here, and it's important to pause halfway because this is where we get to take our first oils break. Okay, so let me open up this oil, and the oil that I'm choosing to use is Young Living's Tea Tree Oil that you can see right here. Mmm, smells delicious. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to put two, so two tea tree drops right in the center. So one, two. You can kind of see the two dots right there. And the reason why I put them when I'm halfway through making my dryer ball is that it's infused from the inside out for the dryer ball. Now that I have those two drops, I'm going to continue just rolling, constantly pressing towards me, and now I'm getting to that end, okay? I wish I could tell you that there's a perfect way to get to the end here. You simply just want to try to wrap as many of your raw edges in as possible, okay? Wrap that, and now I got to my end, okay? So what you're going to do is when you get to the end here, I'm going to stretch as much of this as possible around my dryer ball. Okay, just keep stretching. And for this here, you can tuck in a part if you have to. Whoops, that came out. Just tuck that in again. Okay, there we go. And here's my first dryer ball. And you might just wrap some of the edges around depending how you want to do that, okay? So, I'm going to take my needle, I pre-threaded my needle here, and I'm using black thread simply just to show contrast on this lighter dryer ball here. And what you're going to do is you're going to knot the end, okay? I like to have my two strands tied together because that's double the strength. And what we're going to be doing, it's called a whip stitch, okay? So for any of you who aren't familiar with sewing, what you're going to do is you're going to thread your needle, 
okay? And you're gonna tie both strands of your thread together so that, there, that there's a knot here at the very end, okay? You wanna hold that knot and then take your needle to the very top when you're sewing it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna choose, let's see, I'm gonna start from this end, okay, just so that you can see. I'm gonna turn that raw edge under and I'm gonna start at the one end. I'm gonna attach it to my, I'm gonna start in the ball part of my dryer ball and I'm gonna go through with my needle and thread, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down into the ball again and then up through this edge part here of my dryer ball, okay? And as I do that, for it to be a whip stitch, I'm gonna go underneath my two threads, okay? And it helps to reinforce and you just pull. Now be careful, you wanna pull on the thread, not with your needle here, because you can sometimes end up breaking the thread because of the pressure. So I'm gonna do this very quickly for you, but you can take your as much time as you need for this. So the ball to that seam, I go under both, and then I pull boop, on the thread there. And what we're doing is we're just creating a knotting process. Okay, do that again. Underneath both, and then pull on the thread here. And I'm gonna do that for each seam that I see on my dryer ball. All right, so let's take a quick pause right there and I will come back once I have this all sewn up for you, okay? I'm back and you can see that I'm down to my last whip stitch on this dryer ball. So I want you to take a look right here on how to finish it off to make sure that your seam does not come apart. You'll notice that I, I have sewn from the ball to the seam here and I still have those two uh, threads that I need to go back through. I'm gonna go through again like I did my whip stitch Okay, you can see I did that. And then to finish off my thread, I'm just gonna knot it. So kind of put it in the letter C. You're gonna put your thread through that, okay? And then what you do is you hold it, put your needle right where they come together where you want them to knot, pull the other thread that you still have left to sew with out, and bam, you just did a knot. Take your scissors and you're gonna cut it. And then before you forget, folks, you wanna make sure that you knot the end of your thread because you're gonna be using it later on, okay? So I knot that and I'm gonna put it in my thread here so that I don't lose my needle. And there you go, folks. This is our first dryer ball. You can see right here um, the different color thread where I had to sew all around. And it's generally in the shape of something that's round, okay? It's okay if it's not perfectly spherical. You can take a look at some of my other dryer balls that I have here. These are a little bit bigger, but I had to do a Y seam right here. This one, you can tell I had to sew it in a couple different places, but eventually they will get a little bit more round the more often that they're used in the dryer, okay? So that's how we make dryer ball number one. Now, remember, we have two drops of the tea tree that's already on the inside because this is an infused wool dryer ball. Now what I'm gonna do is before I use it for the first time, I'm gonna put one more drop of tea tree on top of it, okay? Oh, that actually had two. I'm just gonna let that soak in. And then all I have to do is just whoop, pop it in the dryer and it's good to go, all right? Let's take a look at how we would make a dryer ball out of the body part of the wool sweater, okay? I'm gonna grab my one piece right here and I'm gonna lay it on the ground again. Doesn't matter that it has a pocket, don't worry about that. But this, the body parts actually go faster than the sleeves, okay? So if the sleeve, you're like, I don't know if I can do that, don't freak out. Do um, the body part here, okay? So this was our front panel. And what I'm gonna encourage you to do is to flip it over. You wanna have the wrong side or the inside of the sweater facing you. You're then going to, almost like a burrito, take the left side, fold it in, take the right side and fold it in. Since this is where I have a raw edge, I'm gonna turn it around because the bottom part of my sweater was already finished. And again, start off with uh, making the two triangles, okay? So I had my raw edge here. Take both sides, turn them in to form two triangles, okay? 
And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start rolling, rolling, rolling. And remember, as you roll, you wanna pull what? Oh, that's right, guys, pull tight. The tighter your dryer balls, the better your results will be, okay? And I'm just gonna keep rolling, trying to roll all different sides of my ball here. And as you're doing this, don't worry, there's no right or wrong way. Only you are gonna see your dryer ball or whoever does your laundry in your house. All right, so now, okay, pop quiz. What do we do when we're halfway through? Anybody? That's right, two drops, two drops. So I go one, two, okay? That actually had three, but that's okay. All right, and I'm going to roll. Because remember, these are um, Young Living Infused Dryer Balls. And I'm getting to the end here. And this is where it can get a little dicey. But remember, have patience and grace with yourself, okay? There's no right or wrong way to do this, all right? You'll notice I'm getting to the end, and I'm going to pull super tight. I want a really tight dryer ball. I'm going to take this first side, wrap it around along with that. There we go. And you're just going to keep pulling until you think you have a good ball happening here. I might open up the one side here simply to um, help form that ball shape. Okay, and you'll notice I was able to do that. So I'm gonna, so that was the bottom of my sweater. It's okay to leave it like that. And it's actually fun if your dryer ball has a little pocket like this, because over time, as you use your dryer balls, you might have to just reinfuse them about every month or so with a drop or two of oil. You can actually put the oil down in there so it lasts a little bit longer. So now that I have this together, my main seam that I'm going to want to sew is gonna be this guy right here. Or you can choose this guy, it's up to you. So I'm gonna take my thread again, Let's see who is paying attention. We're gonna start. I'm gonna start right here. Actually, let's start right here. My ball. So I put my needle in my ball size and then I put it through the seam. I already have a knot in my thread. Ball to seam, pull it on through, and then uh, what you wanna do is put your needle through those two threads, pull on your thread, Ah, and there you go guys, it's your whip stitch. And you're just gonna do this, ball to seam, put your needle through and whip it around. Ball to seam, pull it on through. The double threads, pull on the thread here, and it's together, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some time to finish sewing that, and then I'll be back to finish this video. I just finished sewing my second dryer ball here. And remember, I uh, tied off the bottom here with another knot, and I'm just gonna clip it, okay? Since we still have more dryer balls to go, I'm gonna knot my thread so I don't forget. That way I can use it the next time I pick up my needle. Okay, and remember, put it in your thread so you don't forget where your needle went. So now, let's take a look at the second dryer ball right here. This was made out of the body of the sweater. You can notice I just quickly did a whip stitch around where that seam was to the ball, okay? You might be asking yourself again, why didn't I sew this? You can if it bothers you, but for my type B minus personality, I'm okay with it because what I can do is as the months go on, as I said before, just open up a side, put one or two drops of whatever desired essential oil you'd like, and you're good to go. So take a look. Right there are two dryer balls, and if you take a look over here, that means I have three, four, five, six. I can get six dryer balls out of this one sweater. And so what I want to encourage you guys is um, really know why are we pushing uh, dryer balls. I push recycled wool sweater dryer balls because number one, we get to save uh, the environment. We're not putting this ma this material and uh, this piece of clothing into a landfill. Um, it has the fibers that I need. So a lot of times the dryer balls will be made out of the wool skeins that you can buy at a craft store. There's nothing wrong with that. Go right ahead if that's right up your alley, um, but do know that that's an entirely different process than what I just explained to you. These, you can simply just do as you're watching 
watching TV or on a cold winter's night like tonight. And uh, basically, it's going to help reduce electricity. Um, these wool dryer ball sweaters can reduce electricity use in your dryer by up to 40%. Um, what I have found in my own experience is that when I place at least four, so you can place four to six of these size balls, okay? But you can see they're about like the size of my fist. They're a good size ball. When I place four to six of them in my dryer, I reduce my drying time where I don't have to put it at my normal setting. What I simply do is uh, switch it to less dry and then in about like 30 to 40 minutes, my full large load of laundry is dry. So it's really a great way that you can save money, save electricity, and in the process, you're also recycling. So if you have any questions, um, please feel free to comment on this video below. I will do my best to try to answer them. Just please know that this is just my experience and this is how I use the recycled sweaters to make uh, my dryer balls. Thank you guys so much for paying attention and hopefully you understand what I was trying to say. If you'd like, I have created my own set of directions um, with a diagram in case you just forget. Um, so send me a private message or comment below if you would like the link to that document, okay? Remember everybody, oil's well that ends well. Thanks so much and have a great weekend.